Welcome to another coding tutorial and in today's video, I'm going to make this disco-like, bacteria-like generative art piece using Perlin noise. I made a video on Perlin noise, what is Perlin noise, how is it generated, and the details of the noise function within p5.js. So if you want to get a better understanding, please check that video out. In today's tutorial, we'll be using the 2D, 3D noise map to make this generative art piece. So how are we going to approach this exactly? So first, we're going to create a grid of squares. And as you can see here, each of the squares in the grid have different sizes. So we're going to use a 2D noise map to output the values that we will set as the size of the square. But then also over time, you can see that the size of the square is also changing. So we're going to use the third argument in the noise map or the 3D noise map to change the size of the square over time. And the color changing that you see here is going to be mapped to the Z value that keeps changing over time in the noise map. So let's get started. So first to draw a grid, let's create a 2D array. I'm going to name it sizes. And I'm going to also create three more variables, columns, rows, and size. I'm going to set this size to 50. And this size is not going to be the size of the square, right? But it's going to help us determine what is the number of columns and the number of rows. And then now we can create a 2D arrays. And in the outer loop, we are going to populate the sizes array with empty arrays of the size columns. And then in the inner loop, we're going to set the value to the value from the noise map. And it's gonna, I'm gonna start with the 2D noise map first. We're gonna put in two arguments. So let's try with zero and zero. And then now we're going to draw a grid. And so I need another nested for loop. Going to use a rect function, which takes in a total of four arguments. The first two are gonna be the X and Y coordinate of the top left corner of the rectangle. So i times size, and then j times size. And then the third and the fourth are going to be the width and the height. So now we want the values inside the sizes array. So let's try this. OK, so What's going on here? You see a bunch of these little dots everywhere. And the reason that you see what you see right now is because the noise function actually output a value between zero and one. So let's fix this part first. So I'm gonna map a value that's coming out of the noise function from zero and one to, let's do zero and the size. Okay, so now the sizes are correct. But there are two things that I want to fix. The first one is that I actually want the squares to be in the middle of the grid. So going to set the rect mode to center. And then with this rect mode, the first two arguments will be the center of the square. So we also need to offset this by size divided by 2. This should fix it. OK, but the bigger problem is that the sizes of all of the squares here are the same. Why is that? And that is because unlike the random function, the noise function, if you put in a specific argument here, which we did, which is 0, 0, it is giving us a value at a point in time. If we continue to just put 0, 0, it's just outputting the same value every single time. Because in every run of the program, there is only one noise map. The noise map doesn't change. So what we need is that instead of giving a fixed argument here, we need to give a variable. And we need to increment that variable every time it goes through the nested for loop. I'm going to set two more variables. I'm going to call it x of and then set it at zero and same thing as y off is going to be at zero. And now nothing's changed because we have not incremented yet. So let's try to increment it by 0 0.01. 
and how we're going to increment it. So let's look at this. So x off or like the x offset is going to be offsetting the horizontal direction, right, by column. And then the y off is going to be offsetting by row. So if you look at our nested for loop right now, the outer for loop is the columns, which means we go through each of the columns and every single row in that column. So every time it goes to the next column, we want to set the y off back to zero, which means every time it is in this loop here, we want to set y off back to zero, and then we want to increment y off by our increment. Every time it goes out here, we want to increment the x off. So let's try this. Ah, I was confused because they all look the same. So I thought I did something wrong, but it actually is because the increment is so small that actually all the sizes of the squares look the same, but they're not. So let's just try it with 0 0.1. Okay, so now you can see the difference now. And then what if we make this, let's do 10. Let me change the color. So let's do fill, let's do it black, and let's do no stroke. All right, we're getting closer, but it is not dynamic right now. So to make it dynamic, we need to give the noise function another argument, so the z direction. First, we need to move these nested for loop from the setup function to the draw function. And now I have a double nested for loop. So I'm going to actually put this here. Actually, it needs to be in here. Whoa, okay. So what we need to do is that we need to also reset this x off value or variable to zero. So now we have the static pattern like before. Next, I'm gonna use a 3D noise map by introducing a new variable called z off. And now let's set a z off variable, initialize it at zero. And z off, or this third argument, is gonna give us the changing of pattern through time, right? And we don't want it to change too quickly. So I am actually going to set it to something slightly smaller. I mean, a lot smaller than the increment that we have here. So let's try this. It's so small that you can't really see what's going on. And now we need to tackle the last piece, which is the color. And I'm actually going to use the value of Z off to give the changing colors here. So first, let's create three new variables, R, G, and B. Then I'm going to set it to a noise function, and then I'm going to use the Z off value. And I also need to multiply it by 255 because the noise value output between 0 and 1, and I want it to be between 0 and 255. And then RG, same thing. Oh, and then we need to set RGB here. Okay, you see that it's in the grayscale, right? And do you know why that is? It is because the RGB value here, I am taking the noise value using the argument of the same Z off. So it means that these three variables here always output the same number, right? Because a noise map stays the same every time we click run. So what we want to do is that we also want to increment this by slightly so that the starting point is different every time. Okay, we're getting closer. And if you want the exact same one that I show at the beginning of this video, what I did was I also multiply this by 1.7 to give it a larger scale so each of the squares can have a size that is bigger than the grid itself. So now you see these like bacteria-like pattern, right? Um, then I actually changed this to 15 and 30. But this and then this to 0 0.03, so it's a little bit slower. 
But you know, all of these variables here are for you to change and play around. The colors, the size, the increments of X off, Y off, Z off. And you can create this type of generative art, but I think it's very useful to understand the underlying noise function that outputs similar values for you to get this random pattern that has a more organic and smooth-like nature for you to create something like this, which is pretty cool. Give it a try.